Welcome back to Green is Good. And we've got with us today John Rosser. He's the founder of Sustainatopia. He's also my friend. Welcome to Green is Good, John. John, thanks so much for having me. Hey, I'm so excited to have you because you've got some real great and exciting things to talk about today. Before we get talking about Sustainatopia and your upcoming conference in Beverly Hills on May 27th to the 30th at the Hyatt Regency, I'd like you to share with our listeners a little bit about your journey and story leading up to the founding of Sustainatopia, John. Sure. Thanks so much for that introduction, John. Um, I have a pretty eclectic background. Uh, I, I studied foreign languages in undergrad, and then I got my international MBA. And I, I found out pretty quickly, and, and I think this is often a cultural thing, that I wasn't a big, big company person as far as where I should work. I was very entrepreneurial. I really enjoyed doing my own thing, and I had a lot of ideas. And that manifested itself into hosting uh, my first business, was the largest international MBA job fair uh, in the country, and this was in the 90s. And so I got to work with many corporations, but just on the other, other side as a service provider. And it was a, it was a really a fine event. Uh, I wound up actually selling it to the Washington Post, uh, mm. and this was in the 90s. And, and that allowed me to, to kind of explore what I, what I really wanted to do, what I was passionate about. And I wound up um, a few years later, producing a television show, which starred my wife, uh, called Origami with Leonore. It was filmed in what's called interstitials, which are two- to three-minute segments. It was on Discovery Kids Latin America. It was also on PBS for many years. And that was a seminal moment for me in my business career because we were very mission-driven as a program. We were trying to teach young boys and girls origami. And I simply loved, uh, as part of my daily activity, being both mission-driven and trying to be sustainable financially. And that was a turning point for me because I realized that when you're able to combine those two things, it's really a great way to go. And I think it's a great way to structure uh, individual companies and, and large companies as well. So after I had had that experience, I was very interested in continuing to to have this ability to both be mission driven but also uh to do business like anyone else and that led me to launch Sustainatopia after uh, actually a couple of years of research and we held our first event in 2010 in Miami Florida and now we're very very happy to be on the west coast in Beverly Hills Okay, so and for our listeners out there that want to learn more about Sustainatopia or sign up for your upcoming conference, they could go to www.sustainatopia, T-O-P-I-A, sustainatopia.com. Share with our listeners first, John, what is Sustainatopia so they understand it from your, from your vision. Sure, thank you. Thank you for that. Um, you know, we're really focused on this new world, and this new world is really – you know, we all have to make money to be sustainable. So that can be in a small business or a very large corporation. You know, business is a good good thing and a good tool overall. We need it. But I think we're, we're entering a world in which it's important that we also solve both social and environmental problems that exist in the world. And I think business is the best available tool to do that. And so our, our conference, and really it's both a conference and a festival, and I can go into that later, uh, but what we really focus on is this new world of doing business and also doing good. And that can take many different forms, as you know. Um, there's so much good stuff to do, and it's actually very valuable stuff in terms of creating value and creating businesses and, and ultimately making money. And this goes across the board. So we like to focus on issues everywhere from the environment, and, and that can be companies that focus on recycling or, or, or other means of focusing on climate change, uh, saving our oceans, different things like that, but also social problems such as urban core poverty, recidivism, which is prisoners going back, back to prison, which is not good for anyone. Um, there are all sorts of tools now and very creative financial tools to help um, lessen or even eliminate these social and environmental concerns. And there's a number of great businesses, including your own, John, focusing on this. And we believe this is the, the economy for the next 500 years. That is, 
when values and value and, and money align, and we can not only you know create employment, uh, create great companies, but also help solve and mitigate these very serious social and environmental problems. And you know what we found through our event, and we've hosted over 1,500 speakers over the past six years. We've had everyone from the White House to celebrities like Donna Karen and the top foundations like Rockefeller and top corp- corporations like HP. We believe there's so much talent available to do this, to, to create an economy of good, to help address these social and environmental concerns. It's just about unlocking this creativity that we have across the board. We have the tools to do it, and our event's really proud to support all these great businesses and entrepreneurs who are addressing these problems. John, you know, you just mentioned a couple of minutes ago, conference, festival, or both. Can you explain the difference between them and why yours might might be really considered both? Sure. Um, our conference is really a business-to-business conference. These are for folks who do this for a living. This can be anyone from a social entrepreneur to yeah. a chief sustainability officer, or chief marketing officer within a corporation, a head of a foundation, a head of an NGO, an investor who's looking to invest in this space, and we're seeing that increasingly that financial capital, including Wall Street capital, is very interested in these projects that both make money and, and do good. So the conference is really uh, a business, business conference, most likely for folks who uh, either have a burning desire to learn about it and we welcome them, or they actually work in this industry already. The festival was developed because we didn't want to be kind of closed door to other people who um, really care about what we're trying to address with Sustainatopia to create a better world. And uh, in that way, we've created a number of different events, everywhere from free events, uh, educational events, to $10 movies, to fundraisers in and around the conference in order to support doing good and bringing together what we like to call basically a family reunion, a family reunion <laughs> of folks who you know, really care about this, care about changing the world. And, you know, we don't try to define are they brothers and sisters or second cousins, but they're all part of the family, and, and we try to, you know, have different portals for folks to connect to Sustainatopia at the level that they're at. I love it. Um, you know, for our listeners who just joined us, we've got John Rossler. He's the founder of Sustainatopia. To learn more about Sustainatopia or sign up for their great conference that's coming up in Beverly Hills, May 27th to the 30th at the Hyatt Regency, you could go to www.sustain, S U S T A. I-N-A-T-O-P-I-A, sustainatopia.com. I'm on your website now. Gorgeous website. Lots of great information there. Share with our listeners some of the past top organizations and leaders that have participated in your great conference and some of the ones that are coming to this year's conference, just to give them a taste of the amazing wide breadth of people and organizations that you have that represent Sustainatopia. Sure. You know, we're particularly proud of a project that we'll be featuring in Los Angeles that was actually conceived at our event in Miami in 2014, and it involves uh, the CDI initiative of the Obama administration, and CDI stands for Climate Data Initiative. It's an initiative to gather on an actionable basis all the data available on climate change. And, And what occurred and this was in 2014 after the president talked about climate change in the State of the Union. We were the first event that they visited to talk about the administration's plan. They actually met Wharton Business School, the, um, a group called Good Company Ventures, which is connected to Wharton Business School, and it's their social business accelerator. And they've catalyzed over $50 million for social businesses over the years. And they both came to the event, and this is kind of the magic of doing events in person, why doing things online will never replicate a physical event, because they both came down speaking about different subjects, and in the networking over several days, they came to discover there was a great project uh, that they could both address, and that is creating a social business accelerator for climate change. And they've done that now with partners MIT, IBM, NASA, which is the federal government agency collecting data within the federal government. 
So we're so proud that this event, uh, or, or rather uh, this, this combination of partners and this idea was fostered at our event in Miami. And we're actually having all these groups, including the White House, come to Los Angeles this May. It's only one of many um, projects, John, that we feature. I actually wouldn't have time to talk about all these great <laughs> projects. In candor, I'm really agnostic about how good stuff happens as long as it happens. So we celebrate good at every level. You know, it doesn't always have That's to be awesome. the White House. We right. see the most incredible social entrepreneurs and companies come to our event. What are some of the key themes, though, that you're that you've put together and structured so people could come together and create these constructive collaborations at Sustainatopia this year? Sure, we have several tracks. Our biggest track mm. is called the Ecosystem of Impact Investing in SRI, and that mm. is um, the ecosystem includes not just investment but the companies and foundations and government officials themselves. As you may know, these projects are becoming increasingly complex, so there's often a role for foundations or nonprofits and government with these structured projects which uh, uh, are trying to solve social or environmental concerns. We have a track for Fortune 500s. Uh, We love our companies. We love our big Fortune 500s. And we love when they're, they're trying to incorporate kind of this new world and what they do. These efforts have been going on for many years, but they come to our event to learn best practices and partner and, and learn more from, from NGOs and other experts uh, about these issues. So we'll have over 80 Fortune 500s participating and intermediaries wow. and consulting firms that service them. Um, we also have a track called Fuse, which is on design, media, ethical fashion, and entertainment the creative industries, uh, so we're excited for them to have their own uh, their own track. Uh, we have a number of large media companies coming, CNN, Money, Inc. Magazine, Forbes, The Economist, all speaking at the event. We have a Smart Cities track and Clean Tech mm-hmm. as well. Uh, there's some amazing things going on, as you know, John, and, and some amazing leadership companies, including Tesla, who's speaking uh, at the event. And then we have another track called Lojas, which focuses on uh, food and uh, consciousness and and uh, yoga companies as well. You know, there's been a big boom in the yoga uh, industry, uh, and so we also have those folks participating as well. And for the, our listeners out there in the United States and around the world, to sign up for your great event at the Hyatt Regency in Beverly Hills, May 27th to May 30th, they can go right to your website and sign up right online. Is that correct? Absolutely. It just takes seconds. <laughs> Perfect. Um, so talk a little bit about, John, your own overall, overall view of sustainability and how that's helping to change the world for the better now and what you've seen since you've launched Sustainatopia and how you've seen great ideas come together at your conference that are already going out there and changing the world. Sure, I'd be happy to. You know, if you go back a couple couple hundred, three hundred years when the Industrial Revolution was just starting. I'll make an analogy for you, and hopefully the listeners can, can appreciate this. When I was growing up, you know, you'd go to a playground, and I grew up in the South. It was really, really hot, and, and I remember the summers. And, you know, you'd have the slide that was blazing hot. It was made out of metal, and, and you know, you'd have concrete uh, <laughs> On, on the playground, and, and as a father of a, of a child now, I look back and I go, well, how in the world could, could our parents allow that to happen? And I don't think it's because our parents were, were necessarily negligent. They just did what they knew, and, and over time people, people decided, you know, that's not the best way to go for young children to have, you know, m- metal slides and, and, and concrete. That's dangerous. So now you see... <laughs> right. We, you see in playgrounds wood chips and, and things that are just much safer. And, you know, so folks learn through experience. So if you compare that to the economy, we go back two, 300 years with the Industrial Revolution. You know, people were trying to do the best they could to create economic activity, to create jobs. And, you know, that, that's what they knew at that time. But, but the fact of the matter is we know better now. We know you know, we know very distinctly that, that we can't continue the way we're going in terms of, uh, you know, creating economic output that cre- creates all these kind of problems and externalities um, with our environment, with our oceans, and, you know, having a, a, an economy that's not as inclusive as we need it to be. 
And, you know, the wonderful thing is we have now, John, this wonderful redesign opportunity. We have the opportunity to redesign the economy for the next 500 years, and we have, you know, more employment opportunities than the eye can see. We have an ability now to bring the, the creation of money back in line with value, to, to not have all these externalities that the Industrial Revolution created. You know, pollution is an easy one. We all remember seeing those photos of London 200 years ago where you couldn't even see uh, the city because of pollution, and maybe even L.A., you know, 30 years ago. But we know better now, and cities have done a better job, and companies are doing a better job. And that's the direction we need to he- head in, because that way we don't create these externalities, which, which wind up being just a huge tax on all of us. But, and we can, you know, create companies, small and large, that, you know, where money, making money and value is aligned. And when you do that, then you, you, you're, you're applying the, the laws of economics perfectly. You're creating employment. And it really is kind of this virtuous circle of, of how things should be. And we're really uh, excited to facilitate and, and bring together the companies around the world, small and big, that are doing this great work and, and be the catalyst that we can be for that. John, we're down to the last three minutes or so. Can you share your vision on where Sustainatopio will go in the next five or ten years? Where, where do you want to drive the future of Sustainatopia? Well, boy, that's a big question, John. But um, I know. you know, we certainly we we certainly are strategic in what we're doing. You know, people yeah. love our brand. What we're particularly excited about is that millennials just love what we're doing. And millennials, mm-hmm. the biggest demographic group in history, they totally get what we're trying to do with Sustainatopia. And in candor, millennials are really driving the bus in a lot of ways. These yeah. are going to be the folks who are who are you know in management. They're running companies. And I think we have a real opportunity here. So we're really interested with our brand and using it in ways that can leverage good. We have a physical event, of course, that we want to grow and grow. But we think our brand can help in so many different ways. We're so excited about the future. We're excited about expanding the brand. We've got some really exciting initiatives that we're going to be announcing soon. And it's just a great time. Uh, You know, I think it's a great time for everyone, especially for, for younger listeners out there, there's never been a time in history where you have a bigger chance to make a difference for the world and you can make a difference on a global basis. And I can't encourage them enough to, to, to do everything they can to try to make a difference because the tools are definitely there in communication with the Internet and in other ways to, to, to really have a profound impact. And, and in candor, those of us who are older, we're counting on you. You know, you've got the energy, you've got the smarts. And, and, and we want to work with you. We're down to a minute and a half or so. Why L.A. over Miami? Why did you decide to make that move? Because that's fascinating, that geography. Sure. Uh, well, we love, we love Miami, and that was our sure. home for so many years. But yeah. we've seen some great, great things in Los Angeles. You know, it's the media capital of the world. There's no better place to, be, to distribute messages to the mass public. And we think, um, you know, sustainability and impact are the right thing to do. And we think probably what's held us back, if anything, is just not, not having a higher frequency of messaging and being clearer about our message. You know, we, have, we all have the secret sauce that work in this space. This is what people want to do. It's aspirational, I think, in their heart of hearts. They know it's the right thing to do. But we just need to do a better job of communicating it celebrating it and get, getting leaders together to solve problems. And that's what we're really intent on doing. So we think for now Los Angeles is a great place for us to be, and we've been welcomed with open arms. It's been a fantastic response to date, and we look forward to this May event. And for our listeners out there that want to come to Sustainatopia 2015, go to www.sustainatopia.com and you can sign up. It's May 27th to May 30th at the Hyatt Regency in Beverly Hills. John Rosser, thank you for being a visionary leader and entrepreneur. You are truly living proof that green is good.